Welcome. My name is Krista Sohm and I'm the Vice President of Communications at Meritor. Today we're going to talk about the real benefits and concerns related to 6x2 axles. While 6x2s are common in Europe and growing in the United States, Canada doesn't currently allow 6x2s with electronically controlled air suspension technology. With us today we have industry leaders to talk about this technology and its application throughout North America. They are Chris Trakowski, Vice President of Maintenance for Bison Transport, Phil Breaker, Vice President of Operations for Newsbomb Transportation, Steve Miller, Controls Engineer at Bendix, Steve Lawrence, Manager of Fleet Sales, Training and Service with Meritor Wabco, Carl Mayer, Director of Product Strategy for North American Axles at Meritor, and Mike Roth, Executive Director for the North American Council for Freight Efficiency, also known as NACFI. We're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to direct my first question uh, to you, Carl. In terms of configurations, the difference between a 6x4 and a 6x2, help us understand that a little in a, in a more technical aspect. Most of the tractor-trailer combinations that you see on the road today are what we call 6x4 vehicles. And what that means is that there's six wheels, four of which are powering the vehicle. And the four that are powering the vehicle are a tandem axle. Okay? And the torque is actually split equally between those two drive axles. Mm -hmm. In comparison, there's a six by two configuration, which is where you take one driving axle, place it in the front typically, and then there's a tag axle in the rear position. That tag axle is a non-driving axle. And by eliminating that carrier or the gearing within that axle will actually increase efficiency because there's less churning losses going through the oil, there's less gear meshes and so forth. And I'm sure we're probably going to hear that there's some uh, weight savings as well with, with, with having one less uh, drive axle. Yeah, customers actually spec 6 by 2s typically for two things. One is weight savings where you can save about 170 kilograms. Uh, by eliminating that, that carrier and that second axle. And then secondly, customers will want the fuel efficiency gains uh, associated. Let's go to Mike Roth. NACFI recently did a study about 6x2s where you conducted various tests both with fleets and OEMs. Can you help us understand what, what were the major findings in terms of true performance gains that, that came out of these tests? So we did a uh, pretty extensive report, talked to over 20 fleets, did some interviews, met with all the truck builders um, and axle builders and so forth, and, and as well suspensions and other, other features, and, and collected a lot of data, unpublished sets of data that um, lead us to believe that the fuel savings are about 2.5%. Uh, and for most tractor trailers in a normal, normal duty cycle, uh, that's about $700 per percent, so that's all $2,000 in fuel savings for every mm -hmm. truck, so it's substantial. I'm going to turn to Steve Miller with Bendix. Uh, Bendix has the e-track system, right. I right. believe. Can you, can you help us understand, it, does that system improve traction control on 6x2s? Yeah, and there's two modes of operation that e-track has. Uh, you have an automatic mode, so when the brake controller senses wheel slip on the drive axle, uh, it's going to Act, uh, send a signal to the uh, pneumatic components. That's going to reduce the air on the undriven axle. The leveling valve is going to pick that up. It's going to start increasing the, the request for air. That's going to be picked up by the driven axle, and that's going to help the vehicle accelerate. Now, the second mode of operation is a, is a driver mode that, say, the driver knows I'm at a stoplight. It looks like I'm going to get some wheel slip. They can, they can hit a switch and actuate the system. ECAS works uh, very similarly. We do have also the uh, automatic feature. When the wheels sense a slippage, it sends a signal using the ATC and it'll slow the wheel down uh, to make sure that it gets out of the event that it's in. And that typically takes less than one second. So what'll happen is the air pressure will then drop on the, um, on the tag axle, which will then put more weight on the drive axle thus giving you better uh, traction. Let's talk to our fleets. Uh, Phil, you're the VP of Operations for Newsbomb Transportation, uh, recipient of Top 100 Trucker and 2012 Fleet of the Year. Uh, you've been running 6x2s for, for quite some time. Can you tell us how long have you had 6x2s in your fleet and uh, about how many do you have now currently? We started working with the 6x2 technology about three years ago. And our main purpose for going to the 6x2 was fuel savings. Now, the weight benefit and, and payload, increased payload, 
is a side benefit of that, which also drives towards the fuel efficiency of the light of the vehicle. So we looked at it for fuel efficiency. We found, like Mike said, some really nice savings there. Uh, I think he mentioned two and a half percent. We saw even closer to three or four percent. On the traction side, like you said, trucks are going to get stuck at times, especially in a lot of snow. And this winter, we had a very difficult winter for that. So we had a number of tow outs, both with six by four tractors and six by twos. But the interesting thing that we found, going back and looking at the six by two tractors, is those without ECAS were three times more likely to need a tow out than those with ECAS. You're with Bison uh, Transport, one of Canada's top fleets, recipient of many awards. Um, Canada doesn't currently allow advanced six by twos. What does that mean to you as a Canadian fleet that at, at current that is not an option? We're in an environment today, we're in a very competitive environment, uh, regardless of where the carrier happens to be based, whether they're US based or Canadian based. Uh, the, the competitive arena that we're in today, the challenges that we're in from a pricing standpoint are, are quite severe, um, all the way through the supply chain. Meritor, Meritor Wabco, Bendix, and several others have jointly been working with the Canadian government uh, right. in hopes of actually changing the current legislation. In Canada, there's a memorandum of understanding on weights and dimensions. They state that within a tandem axle, both axles must be loaded equally or within 1,000 kilograms of each other. 97% of the time that that vehicle is operating, those axles are equally loaded. When there's a traction event or some type of engagement of the automatic suspension controls, we're only talking about that happening 3% of the time. When that engages, there may be a, an event where it's actually over 1,000 kilograms it's important to understand too though that even during that event, it's only 80 seconds duration. So The load know, transfer. That's correct. So, you know, the laws were, like I said, enacted to protect the roadways. Um, within 80 seconds, you know, we believe that there's no, not going to be any impact on the roads. And you know, this load shifting, it's, it, it only occurs at very low speeds and really it's a, it's a relatively small amount of load we're shifting so um, you know it's it's just about getting those those trucks um, out of some slippery situations where they can avoid a tow right I mean if they're deeply stuck they're deeply stuck we feel very good about being able to yield a, a one to a one and a half percent return uh, or efficiency uh, this is one that that clearly has been demonstrated uh, both in in uh, in the re I'll call the real world mm -hmm. and then one in in testing scenarios that NACFI has been in uh, involved in so for us, we look at that and say, we're up against the competition who is leveraging that technology. And uh, we're certainly going to do what's right. And we're certainly going to follow you know, the policies right. and, and right. the regulations. And from a maintenance standpoint, that weight savings that you gain came from pulling away a set of gears and drive right. line. And so right. now you're not maintaining that back axle. Right. So less maintenance Right. overall. Yeah. I think another thing also that's a benefit is you don't have to have two drive tires on each axle. Yep. So that means that now what you can do is you can put a trailer tire mm -hmm. on that non-driven axle or perhaps mm -hmm. even a retread. So there's a savings right there. Mike, did NACFI or does NACFI have any forecast for what you expect the adoption to be uh, right now in the United States over the next several years? Do we expect the tide to really turn on 6 by 2s We predict that uh, this could double every year. So. 3% to 6% to, you know, uh, 9, 12, 15% in the next few years, which is which would make this, uh, you know, a really fast adoption. Is the operating performance of the 6x2 equal to the 6x4? When right. the driver is operating, which he does, like we were saying, 97% of the time, and out on the highway, there's not a difference. This traction uh, situation or concern that a driver might have is really it might be zero speed when he's trying to take off right. or at, right. at low speeds. In terms uh, of the, the increased stability? Right. This year out of the jackknife or sliding events that we incurred in accidents, we didn't have any with 6 by 2s or 6 by 4 and remember only 90% of our fleet is 6 by 4 so we actually uh, are feeling good about that and that's nice to be able to tell a driver if he does have concerns mm -hmm. many times safety is going to come up. I want to thank everyone for joining us today you have been uh, great. As you heard today 6x2 systems deliver lighter weight, 
greater fuel savings, lower maintenance costs, higher payloads, improved traction, and lower greenhouse gas emissions. Ultimately, 6x2s provide a competitive advantage for fleets who adopt this technology. But first, Canada needs to allow 6x2s to travel across all of North America. To learn more, go to 6x2facts.com.